like to welcome you all to the overnight price <laughs> for May the 1st. Yes, that's right. May the 1st is the first of the month. Get up, get up, get up. Cash your checks and come on. May 1st. Man, this year getting out of here. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. If this is your first time tuning in to Tim's Tidbits, I just want to let you know I got options. I buy them, I sell them. Yeah, hear me. <laughs> hey, man, if this is your first time tuning in to Tim's Tidbits, please allow me, me, humble old little old me, say, welcome. If it's not your first time tuning in to Tim's Tidbits, I still want to say welcome. But I'm going to give you a nice hearty, well, thank you for always tuning in with me. My homeboy back here with my shoulder, his name's Spidey. And my sweetie, the love of my life, you are my friend. Back there in the corner, that's my sweetie. If you don't know who I am, which I doubt that there's anybody that's tapping in who don't know who i am i'm just an old regular old dude from fort lauderdale florida but if you don't know who i am my name is timothy lee rogers senior and i get on al gore's internet every single day what is my family texting me talk about that's me all day <laughs> but i'm about to look at that later <laughs> i'm about to look at that later I get on Al Gore's internet every single day and I talk about the price action dealing with the stock market, the S&P 500, whatever you want to call it. I talk about it every day because I want to help someone like you get your aha moment when it comes to trading, investing, all things stock market. Now, had somebody reach out to me on Instagram, right? If there's anybody on Instagram, I don't know if it is. Oh, I forgot to pin my little comment. Just in case somebody does come in, go to the tube. Go to the U of the tube. Jolly pies for this, y'all. I should have been did that already. Pen. Now, if anybody happened to pop up. But somebody reached out to me on Instagram. It was like, hey, um, I was thinking about this. I was thinking about buying this course. I was thinking about. I have no knock against anyone's course. Not at all. I even have a affiliate link to my homeboy jason sweeties um futures course in my description it's down there somewhere it's down there somewhere All right but i am a firm believer in you can learn all you need to learn to be successful in this market for free if you have the patience the dedication you can learn it for free you don't have to pay a dime to learn it. Um, if you're the type of person who just wants to be in a structured, teach me how to do it type thing, hey, by all means, go and go and buy the buy the courses. But there's so much good free stuff out there on Al Gore's internet. Um, the best I've ever come across is the methods. Taught by Michael J. Huddleston. People know him as ICT. That's what I deem to be the best. And it's free. I share my understanding of those concepts on here with a little bit of little Timmy Rogers sprinkled in there. I, I share it the way I understand it. And I share it the way I use it. And so I believe in helping as many people as I can for free. Now, if you just want to spend money on courses, go ahead. I have no knock against that. Like I said, I got an affiliate link below for a course. And choose whatever you choose to do. I'm I'm members of I'm a member of the runners um community. My homeboy Zay. Not, you know, like a little brother to me. You know how it is when you have a little brother, you give him a hard time all the time. Just let them know that you the big brother. Just give him a hard time just because you can. Then they they book back. Oh, I, I, I'm not little brother. <laughs> but I'm a, I'm part of his community. I you know I pay for that. You know, I have no knock against 
paid communities, but I just believe in helping as many people as possible for free. So if you truly want to learn how to do this, you know, I've accepted the fact that I'm a mentor to somebody. I've accepted that. My wife, she, I, she, I've been telling you that for, I've accepted the fact, okay, I'm a mentor to somebody. So, you know, as a mentor, it's my, it's my responsibility to try to help you be the best, whatever you want to be. All right. So just tap in here every day on the U of the tubes. I ask every day, does anyone have anything? Now, mind you, yesterday, um, I can't remember the name. I'm going to have to put this on silent. I'm going to have to put this on silent. I try to keep it on when I'm on live because people be texting me and, and Tim, you, 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 you're not looking at the chat. And I, I, but see, now my family going off, right? Uh, what was I saying? Now, see, I done got distracted because of the phone. Oh, yeah. Yesterday. I can't remember who it was, but they were taking full advantage. Joel. Freaking Joel was taking advantage. Hey. Hey, look here, what you do? Hey, 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 look at homeboy. What you do to this? And, and, and then when you do that, when he, and when you do it, I know he got copper tunnel right now. Went crazy with the questions yesterday. But I don't care because I ask, does anyone have anything? And when I ask that, when I ask, does anyone have anything? Come here. Let me let you in on a little secret. Come here. Come here. Scoot to the front of the class for a second. Come here. Come here. When I ask, does anyone have anything? That's your opportunity to get a free one-on-one. -on -one. And there's somebody in the back that has that same question and they're scared to ask it. And if you ask it, then everybody can get a free one-on-one. -on -one. And you can get your question answered in the way that I understand it and the way that I use it and the way that I am successful at it. And then maybe you can take my answer and apply it to you and figure out a way to make it fit and mold into your trading style and your trading whatever. And then you can make your own method and then. Bob's your uncle. So, yeah, just wanted to share that with you. Now, scoot back. Scoot back. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go see who's in the chat. Because I'm pretty sure we've separated. Hey, somebody's mom. What's going on, somebody's mom? Somebody's mom, I I um I sent you a D. I think I sent you a DM on Instagram. I think I did. Um, cause the other day, um, as the old church folks say, God laid something on my heart while we was on live. And I just want to share some words of encouragement with you. I pray I did not overstep. It's a little bit too late for that now, but I pray I didn't overstep and yeah, but I think I sent you it. I think it was you. I think it was you. I hope if it wasn't you, then I sent somebody a DM. All it was was just a link to the video. And I was like, hey, skip to this time because I had something I want to share with you. Um, Here to learn to share, don't be playing. I waited to the last second possible to make the video live in the hopes that I can catch her slipping. But guess what? Good morning to you. The birds are chirping. Yeah. What's up, Elizabeth? Eh? What's going on? What's up, Pamela? 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 What's up, Kevo? What's going on, Linda? Wake up, wake up, wake up, cash your checks and come on. Rhonda Green. You in Manchester, England? What time is it in England? Is it like in the afternoon or early in the morning? 
And England, what England? What time frame that is? What time zone I mean? Are y'all like six hours behind us or six hours in front of us? I can't remember. When I was in Germany, I think we used to be in front. We used to be ahead in Germany. Yeah, we used to be ahead in Germany. So it's like in England, y'all probably, it's probably like almost the after, it's probably the afternoon for y'all right now. Am I right? Am I wrong? Fishbone the Great. What's going on? What's up, Laverne? Oh, that was Linda. What's up, Laverne? Mendez. What's going on, my guy? What's going on, Sonia? Trade a mo. Audrey. Trey. I said, what's up to somebody's mother? What's up? What's up, Justin? Justin posted up on that. Uh, I thought that was Crunchy Black for a second. Y'all remember Crunch, Crunchy Black from uh, Three Six Mafia? What's up, Tiffany? What's up, Jay? Jay Williams? What's up? Hey. You got the same picture as somebody else. That's Tiffany. Oh, no, that's a different picture. I jollipies. I thought that was the same picture. What's going on, private company? I will check. I be thinking those are hacks because you really be only on YouTube. You're right. You're right to think they're hacks. Um, Which ICT content should we start with, or do we go through all the videos from recent years to now? Well, Justin, I personally think that if you're trying to truly understand all of ICT's concepts, start with, this is my personal opinion, because I believe in understanding everything before trying to move forward. Start with his core content. And if you go to his, like I have, I have um, playlists that I put together to make it more simplified. And a lot of people say they like that, but I personally like getting stuff from the horse's mouth. And um, when Tatiana old demons knock on her door, oh, I'm about to go check these out. Um, if you go to Miguel's page, right? And go to his playlist, you will see multiple playlists here. You want to start with the core content, right? So it starts here. It says, hey, 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 Justin, Justin, get off my screen. You want to start right here. It says 2016 Premium ICT Mentorship Core Content Lectures. That's month one, right? And then it says the same thing month two. Same thing, month three. Same thing, month four. Same, and then it say 2017, but it's the same thing because it, it the year changed. Month five, month six, month seven, month eight, month nine, month 10, month 11, 11 month 12, right? That's all of his core content, right? You're going to learn all of his core content by watching those 12 playlists, right? Right. By watching those 12 playlists, you learn everything about the ICT concepts. Right. And once you watch all of those videos, the only thing you got to do after that is. Um, study the price action. Right. You watch all the videos, you start studying the price action. And then after you do that, you will start to figure out what. PD arrays resonate with you. Right. Then once you figure out what PD arrays resonate with you, then you can form your model, your entry model. Then once you form your entry model, then you test your entry model. Right. And the way you test your entry model is by reading the price action and, you know, what I'm saying looking for when it form, what back testing it for testing it, tape reading. You know what I'm saying? Then you go into sim. Once you go into sim and test it. And then whenever you're ready, you go live. But I advise you to start with the core content. All of those other videos, they're very good information. But if you don't know the core content, you're going to be 
struggling trying to piece things together looking at those other free content videos because there's a lot of stuff left out of those videos then you'd be like man what is what is he talking about what is that man what is so look at the core content and if you can't stomach sitting through his long content i got playlists on my channel i don't know how to get to them um oh here we go on my channel i got playlists on my channel um it says ICT concepts explained, right? The first one, the first playlist is the lingo. That's where I go through and I break down what all the PD arrays are, right? I give you an overview of what we're going to be talking about. That's very important. Look at that. Then I break down all the different PD arrays, right? I tell you exactly how he say it. Then I tell you how I understand it, right? The videos are a little, like a lot shorter than his, but it's just giving you the meat and potatoes of this is a mitigation block. This is a breaker. This is liquidity void. This, 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 right? Then I got um, the reading price action videos. The same thing, showing you how I go through and find the PD arrays in the price action, what it looked like in the price action. And then I got um, building a strategy. And I just, I just go through how I build a strategy based off of, you know what I'm saying? ICT PD arrays. So if you can't stomach sitting through ICT videos, I got three playlists you can look at, but I recommend, I highly advise that you look at the 12 months core content. Anybody who think I took too long for that? Yep. Let me lean back. It's still over there. It's still over there. Uh, 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 okay, it's after two. That's what I figured. That's what I figured. Mm -hmm. What's up, C Walk? I don't even understand how my C Walk. Walk, walk. Hey, what's up, Avery? Hola, que pasa? FC. Okay, I think we have a what's up, Father Legends? I salute you with both hands. Hey, if you are a black spider, I shared something with you last night in the um membership section. Speaking of, I just had a thought. I just had a thought. It is 9:20, right? The market price action didn't do a whole lot last night. Um, the price action didn't do a whole lot last night. So I am going to make this a teachable moment. Make this a teachable moment. Make this a teachable moment. We're going to make this a teachable moment, right? Now. If you look at the gobbly goop that's on my screen, right, to some folks, you may say, hey, you just went in and you drew these lines where the candles were stopping, right? And I know, I know, I know. Y'all hear me say this all the time, right? This is my last time proving something to the people who don't think that, that, that for the for the people who call cap yeah i know y'all tired of hearing me say that because i always say i ain't gonna be proving nothing to nobody and i still be like see if you look at this you, why do we do that why do we say we ain't gonna prove nothing no more and then we still show the proof that we ain't just doing it in hindsight like like it it, it might just be the lot of dealing me that can't allow people to think they got one over on me i don't know but anyway so if you are a black spider member right and you should see something inside the um membership 
that looks like this, right? Something that looks like this right here, right? It's a bunch of gobbly. You can't even see it on the screen right there, right? You can't even see like if you if you kind of look in the background of that picture right there, you can see that green box over there. And you see right there where it says breaker open. If, if I blow it up pretty big there. I blow it up pretty big right there. Right there it says breaker open. Um, mid, uh, mean threshold breaker. Right, right there. You can see it right around there. Right. And then you can see how, you know, so you can see how, it, you know, it says, um, it's around about 10 p.m. at that time. That's where the candles are. You can see the price right there. Yeah, you see it's right, right around that time. It's like it's like back then. You can see it's back then. Right? So let me uh no, I didn't save that picture. Yeah, I didn't save that picture. I was gonna say I because the pic I could have showed the whole screen, but anyway. You can see that that stuff was on the screen back then, right? All the stuff right there. Breaker open, mean threshold breaker, breaker close. You can see that that stuff was on the screen back then, right? And that coincides to, if we go to the, go to the membership section, your channel. When y'all click on membership, do it take a long time to go over there like that? Because mine does. Mine be taking news at 10. Um, right here, see? 11 hours ago. 11 hours ago. I wanted to share my new technique, blah, blah, blah. And there's that picture right there. See? That's the picture that we were just talking about right there. I don't know how to make it bigger. I don't know. how. I never even come in here to do. Are y'all able to save these when I... Cause I can't even click on it. Are y'all able to save it? When I be putting these pictures in here, can y'all save these pictures? Cause I can't even click on it. I'm glad I did that. Somebody let me know if y'all can save these pictures when I put them in there. Right. But yeah, that stuff was there. You see, I posted that last night. It says 11 hours ago. Right. And you can see that stuff was there on the screen. Right. So now, why did I say all of that? Because I don't want people to think that, you know, we we come out here and we rock rough and stuff with our Afro puffs and try to pull the woolly cloth over people's eyes, right? We are out here trying to do a great service and help somebody. Speaking of a great service and help somebody, now I remember what I was saying. I was just talking until I remembered what I was about to say. Now, teachable moment teachable moment um let me make sure y'all can see yes y'all can see the screen right teachable moment right when it when it comes to trading right what's up zay when it comes to trading let me put the, the chat over here y'all know how i do i will get to talking and y'all will say something in the chat and i don't see nothing Right, I'm put the chat over here so I can see y'all while I talk. Right, so when it comes to trading, right, day trading, I'm sorry, when it comes to day trading, right, you want to have procedures, whatever you want to call it, you want to have an SOP, a standard operating procedure, so that you don't have to spend every waking moment sitting in front of the charts right now initially uh, let me put it on full screen and, until i get ready to um until i get ready to go into what i'm actually gonna say initially now when you're first learning to read price action if you have the opportunity you want to sit there during the time you're going to be trading and watch those candles print if you want to be a, a day trader, 
right? It can be futures. It can be options. Whatever you want to day trade, it can just be day trading shares. If you want to be initially when you first start, you want to sit during the window that you plan on trading and watch those candles print. That's the that's the best way to learn how to read the price section and know the emotions you're going to feel while you're in trades and waiting on trades because we have this fantasy in our mind that trades always happen really fast because these fool rules get on Al Gore's internet and be and be hey I made thirty thousand dollars in two minutes today hey I made I made five thousand dollars in 15 minutes today so we have this fantasy in our mind that we're going to get rich quick right they, and, and most time, people that shouting all of that right there, most time they got a course to sell you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not mad at their marketing tactics, but you know what I'm saying? Be be can I ain't gonna say truthful because I, I ain't gonna I ain't because great marketers aren't liars. They just they just put the needle in the vein that you need your fix in. And they they let you find the other stuff out later on your own, right? And so I made five hundred cents in one minute. <laughs> so it's like tell the whole story, let people know that it can happen in two minutes, right? But it can also happen in two hours. It, speaking up, like when I sent that that picture that I shared with the black spiders, right? When I sent out that picture that I have closed, right? I took a um, trade in the Asian, and it took two hours for that trade to manifest, right? If you look in the background, you can see like different accounts back here and they're all in the same trade, right? They're all in the same trade. You got an account here, account there, account there. They're all in the same trade, but it took two hours. This did I got picked up at like 740, right? It was like 740 when I got picked up. I want to say it was a little after 1045 when I heard the thing say target filled. So two hours. It, I, and I wasn't sitting here. They, they, and this is where the teachable moment come in. I wasn't sitting here before I got in. I wasn't sitting here after I got in. And I wasn't sitting here when I was um, managing the trade. So now let's move into the teachable moment, right? Let's move into the teachable moment. I trade whenever my um setup show up. I watch the charts Monday through Friday, and if my if my setup comes about, I take the trade. If it don't come about, I don't take the trade. I typically, if on Mondays, if it's like too juicy to pass up, I'll take it. But typically Mondays, I just watch price to get my feel for how I want to go into the week. Fridays, if I've had a good week, I typically don't trade. If I had a bad week, I typically don't trade, right? But if it's just too juicy to give up, I will take a trade on Friday. So Mondays and Fridays, those kind of my designated watch the market days, but I will take a trade if it's too juicy to pass up. Now, what do you mean by don't be sitting there all day, Tim? The teachable moment in this right here is for anybody who, um, one, first of all, never heard of them, and second of all, um, heard of them but don't use them. Third of all, um, heard of them and use them for a specific reason, but may have not have thought about using them for the reason that I'm talking about. And we're talking about alerts, right? We're talking about alerts. What I do when I'm like, for example, I had been 
you know, sim trading and, and, and testing out the Asian, right? Just to see how it works, right? So now I've gotten to the point where I will implement, I have implemented taking very small um size, right? Not my normal size. If you see here on these three accounts there, it's what well, three accounts that's on the screen. Actually, it's more than that. But three accounts that's on the screen, right? You see there's one contract on there. So I take a very small size, right? Because this ain't my normal time that I trade and I'm just implementing this in the Asian. So I'll take a very small size, right? But it's actual accounts that I'm trading in. But the Asian moves different than New York. So what I do, right? I mark up my chart, right? I mark up my chart just like normal, right? But the Asian moves super duper slow. I ain't trying to spend time with my family, right? So what I do, right? I utilize alerts and you can either use it in Ninja Trader or you can use it in TraderView, right? So I deleted them already. Can you do anybody know if you go back and see deleted alerts? Can you go back and see deleted alerts? I don't think you can. Because I just be um I be I, I like once the alert hit, I just go over and delete it. Uh, I go over and like once it hit, I, I I go over and delete it, right? So basically, what I do, right? I mark up my chart, right? I mark up my chart, and then once I mark up my chart, right? And for those who know how I trade, you already know, you know what I'm saying my my entry model, right? Get out of here, dollar. We don't need you right now. Right. You already know my entry model. Right. If you don't know my entry model. I will share it with you right now. Right. My entry model is. Right. Um, Take liquidity. Right. Take out liquidity and then break back above heavy distribution back past the leg that we took out liquidity, creating a breaker, leaving. Uh, um fair value gap in the week, right? Fair value gap in line with the breaker. Fair value gap in line with the breaker. Okay, so here's what I did, right? Um, when I marked up my chart last night, right? When I marked up my chart last night, we were, what time was it? I got picked up at 740. I got picked up at 740 over here, right, on this candle here, inside this candle right there, because it was around 740 when I got picked up. Let me look at the exact time. Executions, uh, 740 in 22 seconds. So it was inside this candle right here, and then the execution out was 10, 1046. So it was an hour and, I mean, it was two hours and six minutes, right? And so, so we got picked up there. That means we were around here because so, I know we had them came down right there because I marked out the break. Okay, so here we go. I got it now. I got it now. Got it now. Got it now. So here we go. When, what I do, right, I marked up my chart and I'm looking, I'm like, oh, we've come back down into a fair value gap and a breaker, right? And price is dilly dallying like it does during the Asian. So I said, okay, this is an area that I want to go long in, even though it's already here. You know what I'm saying? So I looked at what price is doing. Now, again, let's make this another teachable moment. We're going we gonna to double up on the teachable moments. Right now, right, we're going to pause on the alert teachable moment. And now we're going to move over to a price action teachable moment, right? Take off my alert teachable moment hat, put on my price action teachable moment hat, right? Now, price action. This is the new week opening gap that we just formed, right? We open up the new week opening gap 
We took off away from the new week opening gap here. Push back up to the new week opening gap there. Bodies of the candles respecting the new week opening gap, right? Right there, you see we had a break in market structure. Push back up to the new week opening gap, filling in this SIBI. Then push down, break in market structure again with this huge SIBI right here. And now we're inside here, right? Dilly dallying at this um, SIBI, right? We've come back up to this SIBI and this mitigation block right there right? We've come up to this SIBI and this mitigation block over here, right? Why is that a mitigation block? Because that low did not take out that high, right? So we're dilly-dallying here, right? Right there inside the fair value gap at the top of the breaker. Now, with this new week opening gap sitting right up here, and we've just come down into a breaker and a bullish fair value gap, Right. And we're sitting here, even though we're breaking down, you may look and say, hey, Tim, we're breaking down. Do not get sucked into that. Right. Do not get sucked into that unless you're just trying to scap a little bit, because I know the market just opened up on Sunday night. But if you look. What was happening before, because the market don't think like the algo don't think like us. We think in the terms of, hey, the market just closed and yada, yada, yada. Right. Let's go up to these hourly candles. Right. Right. These hourly candles. What were we doing before we closed on Friday? We were in hot pursuit of this high right here. So the market was. Nothing could stop me. I'm all the way up. The market was going up. Right? Right? And so we've come, we came above this high right here. Right? This high, this, this two o'clock candle on Wednesday. Right? But if you look, what we have been doing, we were staying above that high. Right? Pull it back out, right? This is when we open, right? We came down, right? Look at that. You see that? This is we had this was the high we had just pulled back down, right? And then look what we pulled back down to on the hourly level, right? Right here into this potential order block, right there. We're just pulling back into a potential order block on the hourly level, right? So, what's a bullish order block job? to support price, right? A bullish order block job is to support price, keep price up. Now, you know, on a high time frame, we've pulled back into a bullish order block, right? If you know anything about price action, right? The new week opening gap is a magnet for price. It's a magnet for price, especially when you're, you know what I'm saying? not trending it's a magnet for price so when price has came down and broke structure to the downside but it has not run liquidity don't get sucked in immediately that oh we're breaking market structure to the downside it's time to go down we have not run liquidity yet right the market will typically run liquidity before reversing, right? Right? And so when we came up here, when we came up here and took out this liquidity over here, right? When we came up here and took out this liquidity right up there, right? We stayed up there, right? We blast off, took out this liquidity, and we stayed up there, right? So since we stayed up there, the draw is not down here. If you take out liquidity and reject, then you can look, turn to see the draw being in the opposite direction. But when we took out this liquidity here, we stayed up there. So you look for a draw to the left. You look to the left for the draw, right? So that's why I say don't get tricked in because it's breaking to the downside here, 
that could be a good short down to where something that's expected to support price right don't be shooting for this low right here at this moment don't be shooting for that low at that moment because you got a lot of stuff down here that's supposed to support price and we haven't taken we haven't rejected after taking out liquidity right and the second and the next part of it is the new week opening gap will be a magnet to price right will be a magnet to price so therefore now that we've taken this buy side and stayed above right the draw is still higher right the draw is still higher because we took out buy side stayed above so this is the high we made so from this high the draw is higher because we stayed above this buy side now price action head off um alert hat now right let's go do, 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 do. seven four that's when i got picked up so this is when i was making my charge right so boom these are five minute candles right here right these are five minute candles right here so looking at where we are right we're in this area right here dilly dallying at this so we came down breaking market structure push back up to the new week opening gap magnet for price came down breaking market structure traded back up to the mitigation block in the city right now we're there i said okay we're in a fair value gap and we're right here at my breaker right i'm gonna take it this is what i'm going to do i noticed that my breaker right here the 2 p.m candle from friday that's my breaker right the mean threshold of my breaker right is the open of an order block a potential order block right right here right there it's the open of a potential order block what makes this an order block what makes this an order block? I'm glad you asked that question. I am glad you asked that question. Right? So, when we came here, we came down, we pushed up into this down close candle. We reversed that. This area right here is some type of resistance. We come to a level of resistance. Coming back toward this high right here we come to a type of resistance and we shift sentiment when we shift sentiment we take off right and we leave a fair value gap right so we came to some type of resistance shift sentiment took off left a fair value gap potential order block right so my mean threshold of my breaker is right at the open of this order block right so right then and there i said i want to take my trade off of the mean threshold of this breaker because that breaker is in line with this order block right there at the fair value gap give or take a little bit right and then if you drop down and get your eagle loan to skinny mini right y'all know i always got to go check skinny mini check skinny mini and anybody who don't know who skinny mini is that's just the one minute can um chart that is just the one minute chart let's get it around the same time here this is where we're at, the dilly dallying all right if you look at skinny mini right coming to skinny mini if you look there is a busy right there there is a busy right there and that mean threshold is pretty much at consequent encroachment of that busy which is at the open of that order block right which is at a mitigation block on the one minute it's a lot of confluence right there at that mean threshold for my setup, 
I need a run on liquidity, a reversal creating a breaker with a fair value gap in line with the breaker. So now inside my breaker, right, inside my breaker that I want to trade on, right, the five minute, this is a five minute breaker, but we also got the same area, got this one minute breaker and it's got a um, mitigation block right there, right? You got a mitigation block, you got a breaker, you got a fair value gap. It's a lot of confluence on the one minute, right? So I said, I want to enter at this mitigation block, right? Th uh, mean threshold of the mitigation block. But look where price is. Price is up here meandering, right? Price is up here meandering. I Now, now we get into a teachable moment. I'm not fun to sit here and wait on price to meander, right? So I then, I say, what is this low right here? This low is 4183.25, right? That's one tick above where I want to enter. 4180, no, one point, close three ticks, three ticks above where I want to enter. So I go to my handy dandy alerts. And I say, when price crossing 4183.25, play this sound for 10 seconds. And the sound goes like this. Play that for 10 seconds, right? So, boop, put that in there put that alert in there and I go about my way and I just leave my um audio on so that I can hear it. And I tell my family, if y'all hear something, that's just me waiting on the charts to do something, right? Why do I put that alert there, right? Because I want to be alerted when price drops below that low right there. Why? Because I'm trying to enter right here at 4182.50, right? Well, Tim, why not just put your limit order at 4182.50? I'm glad you asked that question, right? Because I want to, I'm not sitting here watching the price. So I want to be alerted as price is approaching my entry, right? But I don't want to leave a limit order there because price may go do something that I don't want it to do and then approach my entry, right? For example, if price never came and took this low when it was dilly-dallying here and it took off and came and took out this high, I don't want to go long right here anymore. You see what I'm saying? So if it took off up here and then came back down and it got me in, and I'm trying to go long there, but we've run this liquidity and rejected, it, and now it's time to go short. I'm screwed, right? Because I'm not sitting here watching the price. I want to be alerted. Hey, Tim, it just crossed 4183.25. Come look at the charts. I should record that and put it in the audio file. I, I'm going to record. I'm going to see if I can record that and put it in the audio file to be like, hey, Tim, it just crossed your price point. Come look at the charts. <laughs> <laughs> so when the alert go off, I come back here and I sit down. I, I say, OK, boom, it's doing exactly what I wanted. Now, mind you, the Asian moves very slow compared to the New York. So. It can take a long time for it to hit your price point. And that why, that's why you want to come and look at the chart to make sure it's still doing what you anticipate it to do and not just leave the limit order there because the computer going to do what you tell it to do. If you leave a limit order there, it don't care if it went and did something else. It's just going to pick you up when it hits that price. So you set the alert when it's approaching your entry area so that you can come and look to see if price is still doing what you wanted to do.
right? Now, pro tip number one. So when I got the alert, I come back here, right? And when I come back here, right, right there, right? That's when, like, see this candle right here? I don't know if y'all can see. Let me, let me uh, make it bigger for you. There you go. There you go. So you see this candle right here? It went below that low. Right? That candle went below that low. And I come and look at the charts. Right? It's still doing what I want it to do. Right? I want it to. I want it to come down. I want it to come down and get to the um mean threshold of this breaker, right? Without before going back up. I want to catch the breaker to go back up to the um new week opening gap. Why is the new week opening gap my target? Let's switch hats real quick. Boop. Price action. Boop. The new week opening gap is my target and not this high because the new week opening gap is a magnet for price. Where are we? Where is price right here at this time when I get my alert? In relation to the new week opening gap, price is below it, right? When we're below a PD array, can somebody put in the chat what we expect that PD array to be? when we're below the PD array, right? The new week opening gap up here, price is down here. We're going long down here to go back up to the new week opening gap instead of that high. Why am I going to the new week opening gap instead of that high over there? When we're below a PD array, we expect that PD, PD array to be what? Y'all see how long it takes? For me to get you out, because I'm pretty sure somebody done typed it already, right? But y'all can see, I still, I'm still looking. That's why when y'all be like, Tim, I already put it in the chat, and, and I still don't see nothing. I still don't see nothing. I still don't see nothing. I said below, Father Legends. If we're below the PD array and we're going back up to it, what do we expect the PD array to be? Not support, but if we're below the PD array and we're going long back up to it, we expect that PD array to act as resist the odds. There you go. Resist the odds. Very well. Very well. Right? So I'm targeting the PD, the new week opening gap as my exit. The low of the new week opening gap, 41.90. That's my exit because I'm expecting it to act as resistance. I don't care if it continues to blast off because that's my target. I'm not being greedy. That is seven and a half points when I'm really only wanting five. Right? So price action hat off. Tip hat back on. Right. So you got it. Targeting the new week opening gap because I'm expecting it to act as resistance. Price action head off right now. Do -do 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 -do. OK, yeah. Price doing what I wanted to do. Now I come in here and I drop my limit order at forty one eighty two fifty. Boom. The limit order is there. Right. I'm giving it to. Just below. that low right there right giving it to just below that low right there that's the sell side liquidity that i'm giving it to why am i giving it to that because it's first of all is within the um um five points that i'm gonna give right it's within the five points that i'm gonna give but that's the low that's the low from this run right here right that's the low from this run right here if this right here um if this move down turns out to be 
a potential reversal this is the low that it's going to attack first right that's below my breaker right i'm not going to choke it and and put it right at the bottom of my breaker just to say i got a super tight stop loss right i'm going to play it smart i'm going to play it based off the price action right this is the liquidity that will be attacked if this turns out to be a reversal so i'm going to put my stop below that low is within my five points that i'm allowed to give so i'm putting it and so it's like a six and a half six no it's not five points it's oh it was because i was going for seven and it was less than seven that's what it was i was going for it was seven and a half and the stop was six and a half so it was a little better than one for one and it was a smaller size. That's what it was. Sorry about that. It was small. I wasn't going full. I wasn't going my full five contracts like I normally do. It was only one contract. So since it was one contract, seven and a half points, then I was like, okay, I'm going to give it to below this low because that's going to be um like six points. Yeah, that was six points. Yeah, six points, 82, 57, yeah, six points for seven and a half points. Pretty much one for one, right? That's where the stop was. I fully expected it not to come down there, right? I, I, I didn't expect it to break past this breaker, right? But I had it there. That's where I put it at. Now, moving on over, back to the alert stuff, right? Got picked up right there. That's the 740 candle. Remember, I told you got picked up at 740 in 22 seconds, right? So got picked up there. Now let's move forward. Move forward hastily. All right. Y'all see all this time that is in there? Y'all see all this time that is in there. All right. During it, during all this time right here, me and my wife, we done went all to Walmart. We went to Walmart getting groceries and like getting picking up a few groceries and shower curtains, stuff like that right there. Um, before before we even left, when uh I, I when I said everything, she was on the couch, Chris was on the couch. I say, if y'all hear something, that's just me back there doing something, right? It went off while we was watching TV. She was like, Oh, that's the noise you was talking about. I was like, Yeah, right, came back here, set my order, it got in. Once I got into the um order, I mean the position, I said, hey, I'm going to go to Walmart, get them boys a shower curtain. She was like, I'm riding with you. You know what I'm saying? We was in there folding up laundry. She was like, I'm riding with you. We went to Walmart. We hanging out, yada, 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 all of that right there, right? So I'm in the trade. It's going. Now, when I come back home, <clears throat> I come back home, I come in to check how the trade is going, right? So I came in to check how the trade is going. When did I get out? 1046. Okay. Come in to check how the trade is going. Now, here we go. We're talking about um trade management now, right? And because what I share with the um black spiders, I was like, hey, here's a here's something um that I've been implementing to help me not um choke my trade and not take unnecessary loss right so using the alerts to i done been on here over an hour i'm sorry y'all i'm so sorry for keeping you this long now using alerts to not choke your trade but and to not take unnecessary loss right yeah, yeah, yeah. Trade how you want to trade when it comes to, you know what I'm saying, your stop loss. I'm not moving my stop. I ain't choking off my trade. I trust my stop. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to the plan. Look here, man. I'm trading to make money. I'm trading to make money, and I'm trading to not lose money, right? Losses are a part of it, but I ain't trying to lose money. Right. So anything I got to do to not lose money, I do that. So now managing a trade. So as you see here, we came. 
and um we took off on this eight this 842 candle boom we take off come up above this consolidation right there right close in this sibby from 637 we close in that sibby reject down a little bit right cuz we hit this um mitigation block right there right we hit a bearish um mitigation block right there i mean bearish order block i'm sorry we hit this bearish order block right there and we got a bearish mitigation block right over here right so boom rejected off of that and then we just started consolidating right here pushed up above one more time got to the top of the bissy right we got to the top of the bissy so right here we came down through the bissy right and then now we got back up to the top of the bissy so now we're inside this bissy it's trying to decide do it want to be a, a a gap or an inversion gap what are you going to do it's not really it's not really um supporting price it's not really resisting price we're stuck inside this bissy here right there at the top right so now this is when you like okay we've broke to the upside because you come here and look when we can't it came down here well initially when we came down and we got the alert right we came below up under came up under this sell side right here this short-term sell side got down into these imbalances and all of that right there pushed back up right did not take out the high got back down below the sell side again and then bang, yow, we took off right right so we took liquidity took liquidity took off right so now what does that set up another entry for me i'm already in i got in here off of a higher time frame entry setup right hold up hold up wait wait a minute got to put my price action hat back on price action hat back on now i'm sorry so i got in here off of a liquidity run a reversal appreciate that Hines. you was already a member you was already a member Hines. you wasn't a member already your name was green i thought your name was green anyway um i appreciate you Hines. thank you for joining the channel membership All right so um yeah my entry was all based off the higher time frame information now here on the one minute right what do we got here we took out liquidity right came back failed to take out the high right when you fail to take out the high what's the draw on liquidity the low that took you there right we came down boom took out the low that took us there and rejected right now that we rejected off of the low what's the draw right the high that took you there right so now we came up here and we got the bang out. we get the pang out take out that high what does that create a breaker there's your breaker right there right that pang out made a fair value gap right there now that's price action right come back down here's your entry up oh, there's something called institutional order flow entry drill that's one tick inside the fair value gap that's institutional order flow entry drill one tick 185 one 41.85 even right that's your entry now back off that's my that now my same entry model has set up on the one minute i'm already in the trade right so i see that my same entry model has already set up i'm not gonna hold you i was very tempted to add another contract right here but i said i'm not gonna be greedy because i'm i'm just starting to implement trading in the asian so i'm not gonna just jump out there and do stuff that i would do in the new york right so now that i see that we have i'm in the trade and then we got my exact same entry model repeated again while i'm in the trade this 
is a entry by itself. So that would be a spot to be able to add on to your position that you're already in. You don't want to add on to your position if you're negative. If it's going against you, don't average down to try to, um, um, yes, I somehow got downgraded. User error. Okay. Right. You don't want to average down. If it's going against you, just let it go ahead and hit your stop and, and, and re-enter. Don't try to average down because it can keep going against you. Now, but when you get another entry confirmation all of its own while you already in the trade, then you can add to it. That's another story for another time. Now, now that I see that we're here dilly-dallying there, right? With dilly that I said, okay, we got another entry there. Boom. I like that. So I set an alert, right? Came here. I said, if price crosses below 41.85, if price crosses below 41.85, you see the little line right there? Y'all see the little line pop up when I was set? That's the alert line. Right. I don't know if y'all can see that. Can y'all see that? Yes, you can. There's a little dashed line right there. Right. If price drops below 4185, play this noise for me. Right. What tell? Why are getting you getting it to play that noise for you? Because when we come back, came back down and make this institutional order flow entry drill. Right. I do not want price to continue down and get down below this low right here. I, if price continues down and get below this low right here, right? This is my entry is there. This my entry right here is at 4182. If price get down below that low right there, then this PD array, that fair value gap. And that breaker, all that's getting disrespected. And that order block, this fair value gap, that breaker, and this order block is getting disrespected. That's three PD arrays. And if you start disrespecting three PD arrays, you're probably on the wrong side of the trade, right? So I went long here, right? And the um that the top of this fair value gap could have very well been. The, all the farther algo wanted to go up so that so if it start coming back against me right i want to know as soon as possible so i can save as much profit as i can right so right now also <clears throat> also that would give me the opportunity right if it did come back and alert me that would give me the opportunity to come see if it just wicked down really quick and popped back up or if it just kept sliding down, right? If it kept sliding down, give me opportunity to assess the situation, right? So, and what's the last one I said right there? 41.84.25. I set one at 41.84.25. I don't know what time I set it for. Right there, 41.84.25. Okay, yeah. So that's where I put it. I didn't put it at the low right there. I didn't put it at the low. I put it at 41.84.25. And 41.84.25 was um just below consequent encroachment. So um I stand corrected. I didn't put it at this low. I didn't put it at the institutional order flow entry drill. I recognized that. I said, hey, that's institutional order flow entry drill, right? And I thought I put it there. But I put it just below consequent encroachment. I put it just below consequent encroachment. Yes. 41.84.50 is consequent encroachment. So if price dropped below 41.84.25, that means we were sliding past consequent encroachment. That Because it could come to 41.84.25 and not set off the alert. 
But if it go to 4184 even, it's going to set off my alert. That means we've slid past consequent encroachment. So I stand corrected on where I put it. I'm glad I looked at the picture. But I put it at 4184.25. It was one tick below consequent encroachment. And that way, if that alert go off, I can come in and be like, hey, let me see if it just wick down there or if it's, if it's going to keep going. And if I would have got the alert, then I would have came in immediately. And if you see on my um, alert notification, if you look at my alert notification, I don't know if you can tell there, but it says, it says um, collapse position. Say 4184.25 collapse position, right? And um, I never got the alert. I never got the alert, but I heard the computer say, um, target, target field. As you move forward, right, right there, that candle right there at, um, this 10, cause it said 1046, 1046, 39. So this candle right here, when it went up and touched it right not this one over here but when it went up and touched it right there it got me out of the trade right there that candle right there when it when it kissed it it got me out this candle would have definitely got me out right because it it crossed it and then after that i could care less what it did for the rest of the night it did go up a little bit higher um throughout the london after midnight it went up throughout and then at 154 it took out the buy side then it went above that again at 242 and then we came and started breaking down and then after the new york open we've um started moving back up again toward that weekly high right there you go we started breaking down stop look at there look at freaking there it came back to the exact mean threshold of that mitigation block at eight o'clock and then it came back one more time at 9 25 9 20 something the exact same entry spot look at that the exact you could have taken that exact same trade you could have taken the exact same trade again right there and got out in the exact same spot again that's the exact same trade look at that look at that that's crazy that wow that's crazy. And then look at look at right price. Remember when I told you about the magnet for price? Look at that. It came back up. New week opening gap. Consolidated. Wick down below it a little bit. Got into that. Um, oh yeah, it went wick for wick, didn't it? Then I go wick for wick. Yep. The high of that candle. 41.8975. Low of that candle. 41 41.8975. Yep. Went wick for wick. Went back up. Took that out, pulled back down into, I don't know why I got that. Oh, that's the sell side. That's the old sell side, I think. All right? Is that the old sell side? Nope. I don't know why that line is there. That's just a line that I stuck there. Yeah. And then, now we're still pushing up. But yeah, man, I just wanted to share that. that that's just... That's that's just my way of like I've started implementing that, especially like during the Asian when I'm not going to be sitting here in front of the charts. Um, you can do it for any time frame that you want to. I um I just use it during the Asian because I'm not actually sitting there watching it. Um, you can do it during the London. You can do it during the New York. Like you don't have like if you don't feel like sitting there, you mark up your chart. Now during the New York, it might be moving a little bit faster, but with the Asian, y'all, as y'all see it, it took like hours for everything to play out. But you know, that's just how I utilize that. That's how I utilize the alerts to help me um not sit here in front of the charts, mark up my chart, set the alert for the price I want to come check on it at. Then once I check on it, once I get in let price do its thing and then once price do its thing i set alert around certain pd arrays oh yeah last line of defense 
that's what it is. The, the last line of defense is when, okay, I might be on the wrong side of the trade. So I set the alert at the last line of defense. And then once I get that alert, I come in, assess the situation. Hey, I'm on the wrong side of the trade, collapse the trade while I'm still in profit. Right. The last line of defense can also be used where you're not in the trade yet and you want to um let's just say right here we haven't we haven't taken out this 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 buy side right there this weekly high we haven't taken that weekly high yet right um so we're it's like okay we want opportunity to um get in on that weekly high if we don't take it right so we look and we like okay we got a, a fair value gap down here that we may be able to get in on right so um or you say hey i don't want to participate we too far gone right we're too far gone i don't want to participate in that high right there right so you start pulling back and you be like man we still ain't take out that high yet you know what i'm saying so i don't want to go short because we ain't take out that high yet what's going to be the point when okay i'm cool with going short then you pick a last line of defense right and you say okay if we come down and take out this low right here right then i'm willing to take a short right if we come down and take out that low i'm willing to take a short i'm just picking that you could pick this low right here you could pick this low right here but i'm picking this low right there just because right you could pick this low because and the reason why i say you could pick this low is because we came up this low right here came up and took out the buy side there right right we traded down and we went back above that buy side right there right now if we come back down and take out that low right there we got a breaker right there we got a breaker right there so you can pick that low right you could pick that low set your alert right there and be like okay this the last line of defense for taking out this high if we take this low right here i'm not interested and trying to go long to take that high now i'm interested in a short so this is the last line of defense for the bullishness to take out that high i'm not going to sit here all day and wait to see what it does so i'm going to put that um alert there when price crosses 4187.50 play that noise for me and then you can be like hey, that's the last line of defense for the bullishness we don't take out that high we take out that low with some authority Ping out! leave a um imbalance over here right that'll be a good shorting opportunity like that not saying that would be but that's how you can use the last line of defense for you're not in a trade yet and you interested in taking a trade but you're not trying to tag along for this run coming up here because it's gone so far that is all i have does anybody have anything else or does anybody have anything should i say who all still in here i see it say 42 who all still up in here look how price just sucked back down Wait up. Suck back down. What's up, E Rock? Oh, Spileen. Market already open. We didn't get a chance to talk about Spileen today. I'm sorry. Market already open. We ain't talk about Spileen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Spileen. I don't went through the full discussion now. We already know what Spileen doing. Uh, 
So basically, we wait for buy side or sell side to be taken, then wait for the breaking market structure the other way. I don't speak French, but that's what I do. That's my model. That's my model. My model is, right? Remember when ICT said, I don't know if you saw his tweet, but a long time ago, he was like, can you write your model on the back of a napkin if you're sitting at the pub drinking with your buddies? Right? My model is take liquidity, right? Reverse distribution opposite way, create and breaker, leaving fair value gap, retrace the fair value gap, and breaker. That's my model, right? So I can't sit here and say, yeah, we wait for buy side or sell side to be taken. That may not be your model. If your model calls for you to wait for buy side or sell side to be taken then yes you wait for buy side or sell side to be taken and then you don't just look for um market structure the other way right unless you only trade the reversal trades now me i trade reversals and continuations so when the buy side or sell side gets taken I may get a continuation set up, right? And what's the difference? If you take the buy side and sell side and price keep going that, like it's adamant about going that way, right? It can give you a continuation signal. Or if it take buy side or sell side and gets rejected, then that can be a reversal signal. So like the, it just depends. It's like you have to know your model. You have to know your model and how to work your model. But again, waiting on buy side and sell side to be taken is the first step in my model. What's up, E-Rock? I appreciate you for being here. Thank you, Hitler and Shell. Salute Father Legends out there grinding. Salute Rhonda out there grinding, listening at work. FC here. Regina non maker is here <laughs> with the with the power head shot with the power head shot don't play with it <laughs> uh, I'm still here playing on reviewing mama I want to trade <laughs> hey man that's all I got if y'all ain't got nothing for me, I ain't got no more for you. I appreciate y'all for hanging out with me. I'm noticing some divergence. We got some divergence. The the NQ, the NQ is heavy, like a Chevy. If you notice, the NQ is heavy, like a Chevy. The um NQ made a high back here at zero three. And has been going down since, right? That same area, the ES has gone above that area. It was like pretty much consolidating at that time, but it has gone above that area. And the Dow has gone above that consolidation also. The NQ is heavy as a Chevy right now. So we have some divergence going on. Divergence usually ends up in chop, chop, chop. Chop, chop. righty, that's it, man. I'm fun to um hydrate a bit more. Look at some country Wayne videos. Um, if I have enough time, may check out me a few cow feet videos, and then I'm gonna go to the gym and I'm going to exercise. And I'm going to eat lunch afterwards and I'm going to watch TV and I'm going to put my comforter back on my bed because it's in the dryer right now. Is it a comforter or a 
what's the difference between the um comforter and the um man, what's the name? You got the comforter and then you got the it ain't blanket. It's not blanket. What do you call the thing? Is it blanket? I don't know. What is a comforter? Why do they call it a comforter? Does it comfort you? Cover. Co we used to call them cover. Give me stop pulling the covers off me. We used to call them covers when I was little. What's the difference between a comforter and a cover? Do anybody know? <laughs> Do anybody know what's, what's the difference between a comfort and a cover? Because when I look, I'd be like, hey, stop pulling the cover. Now, I do I do remember, like, our covers wasn't as thick as my comfort now. Like, our covers was like, they was like, like low-key sheets. They were <laughs> so, the, oh, so the comfort, the, the comfort are thicker. The comfort are thicker. Bed spread. Welcome, Keisha. Welcome to the channel memberships. Welcome. Ah man, I a hey, I covers was low key sheets, man. No things were so thin. Bed spreads. <laughs> that's what hey, that's what my uncle, my uncle, and my grandma used to call the sheets bed. Go get them bed spreads and put. <laughs> was the bed spreads the sheets? Or was the bed spreads the whole spread? Because when my uncle and my uncle and them used to be like, hey man, this is a nice spread you got here. So the bed spread was that the whole the sheet, the fitted sheet, the flat sheet, the pillowcase, the um comforter. Because we used to call them comforter sets. When I was in the military, hey, run up there to the PAs and get one of them comforter sets. And it came with everything. You know what I'm saying? Bed spreads. Fall over the sides of the bed, comfort. Oh, so the bed spread is the cover. So the bed spread is the cover. Like the bed spread is the ones that hang over the side. So that's the cover. And then the comforter, like that means I got a comforter. Cause like when I put it on, we got a king size bed, and we put it on there, it only stick off the side of the bed like this far, like on each side, except for the foot. The foot go all the way down to the footboard. You know what I'm saying? And we flip the we flip the top back. But like the 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 what's now it just barely hang over the side. Right? I'd be like, man. Y'all, y'all know how I be. <laughs> oh, I had it on mute. It was mute. I, I still was muted. I was muted. <laughs> I was trying to uh I was trying to I was trying to stop the whistling, but it was muted. So y'all couldn't hear nothing I was saying. Y'all couldn't hear nothing I was saying because I was trying to stop the whistle and it was muted. Oh, well, that was a fun field trip. <laughs> hey, man, I'll see y'all. I'll see y'all tonight, man. For the price action recap, if you go trade, please trade safe. If you're not going to trade, please take copious notes so you can go back and study what you saw today uh enjoy your day man gone yeah.